The gothic horror of Bloodborne has got to be one of the poorest brands to overlay on the top of my record. And it's because of the not despite the fact that this game rules as hard as it does. The dissonance that comes from our bloody plot rhythm settle one and getting turned into three web race tracks and hilarious. There is more than just loves in this game. Though, even though, I guess it's not exactly a fan game anymore. A cease and desist from Sony has morphed the game formerly known as Bloodborne Cards into its new legally distant cousin Nightmare Cards, and it's come out of the other side of the brand removal with the spirit of the project still intact. Maybe the small upside of the legal action is that Nightmare Card lives in places Bloodborne Card never could, official grand distribution plans like Steam and Itch. I hope it means more playable play in Nightmare Card, Itch rules. Don't expect your next ever Garden Card Racers out of this one. It's retained it's a fun game price for 0 bucks and you inherit in the fun game scope and uncle that. But that scope is aimed at well. Online multiplayer, high level quantity and the Grand Prix mode that strings those levels together may not have made the cut. But in their place is what makes Nightmare Card unique. A short but dense campaign that's flavorful as hell and filled the brim with the way of creativity and the premise of this thing suggests. The nightmare begins again, and the hunter awakens from a misty dreams has unwillingly made her perception of phrases. There's a little over a dozen of possible tracks depending on how you count them and they are glorious. They ditch the usual dim jumping that defines your average card that track lineup and it then focuses on cohesion. A big spooky eye of sovereign looking clock tower can be seen somewhere on the horizon in most levels. And it acts like a suitable visual indicator of where the tracks are in relation to each other. Because Nightmare Card is a singular place, Miravodia and the streets that exist around it, the servers that can exist beneath it, the clock towers that exist inside of it, and the spooky dream balls that probably exit because of it. There's a great atmosphere that brings Miravodia to life, and also works to enable Nightmare Cards consistent of reinforcement of just how hilarious the experience is. There's one joke in Nightmare Card and it's a goddamn good one. People with cages for faces should not be on motorcycles, nor should spooky werewolves be drunk or power-ups. The campaign is only 90 minutes long to get the hell out before the joke gets old and it squeezes dog mileage out it out. You get a spooky cut sign of a demon's jaw that looks like it's ready to unhinge and then BAM! Hot car to his motorcycle. It's hilarious every time, as it boasts transition into phase 2. Just something about getting a new hot bear while in a car is just absolutely peak. The actual races themselves are governed by a standard driving and drifting system with a nightmare car equivalent of purple sparks being long drifts as a convert into a consumable boost. There are the skin versions of blue shells and banana peels, but the contents of the item box are largely guns, each with different ranges and ammo ounce. Couple of that with a really powerful hot break that lets you turn 180 degrees on the team and you have 100 tension for what is just a major vehicle combat as it is a vehicle racing game. The campaign has just as many arena based battle levels as the ghost racing levels with red objectives like capture the flag and good old elimination. The experience of moving through the campaign is diverse and fast paced because of the constant alternation of modes, levels and the complete refusal to reuse anything, which makes it extra enticing to make advantage of the fact that it's a new game possible as well. In conclusion, Nightmare Cards, the best backset, it's a function, it's a vibe. The game plays in full and free and decor sincerity filter and some texture flickering of the edges of both polygons. It keeps the view distance short to emulate that old school style as well as it also tidies into the spooky atmosphere. It nails that nostalgia feeling, but it stops so short of being just a fluffy nostalgia bait game by virtue of how unique it actually is. The subtle genius of Bloodborne Card Racer is that the game is being homage is a totally different genre. Card racers are as far as you can get of Bloodborne, that's a joke after all. And the graphical style created here is like a console generation remote of Bloodborne Zero. Despite thematically being a clear and a candid Bloodborne fan game, Nightmare Card is an all thing. 
It's a playable campaign focus card combo tracer that grounds its strike designs within the square of mileage and of single city. It plays great, drives great, and fills the story mode with the tones of wide variety. The premise might be one of the big joke, but the final product isn't. It's a just a good game.